It's Amina's House Podcast, episode 143. Amina, say what? I'm Shayna B. Sherlock Homeboy, a.k.a. Garnett Briscoe. That's the one. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. What, what hey it guys. do? It's September. It, it got here September. fast. Child, I haven't even been to the beach yet. This is oh, crazy. it's over. <laughs> no, I'm I going to, go to the this weekend, but it's going to be cold. Girl, you want to go to the beach? Let's go to the beach. It's going to be cold. I don't care, girl. I'm going to get right in that cold water and take all my pictures. I do not care. (laughs) I will find me some hot little thing to brush my body up up on (laughs) and make body heat right in the water. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, I want to go to the beach. Let's go. All right, well, what beach are you trying to go to? I don't care. I do care because it's Labor Day weekend. It's going to be a lot of people. I like to go to the paid ones where you have to buy a badge because... They do the crowd control. Yeah. Mm. Listen, you pick the beach and I'm there. I, oh, I we gotta get our tickets if we get a badge. We gotta get that tonight. They sell I didn't, out. I didn't realize going to the beach was so complicated now. Yeah. <laughs> I try to, to go free back one. Sunday. You <laughs> what? You be going to the free ones. You can't do that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I listen. They, oh, you want me to pay. Let me walk yes. down. Let me walk down the shore some and find the free one. <laughs> right down the boardwalk. Right. Thank you. Oh, y'all pay. Oh, five dollars. All right. Let's walk down some and find the other one. Shout out to Derek Hayes from the Sixers. Derek put me on. I'm not going to put them all the way here, but to a couple Central Jersey beaches that you do have to buy badge, but especially in Corona, I appreciate it because they control the numbers, so you never have like a plethora of people on the beach at any time. I've only been once, but my sister and my niece and my brother, they've been a couple times and they always say like, it's not overcrowded, it's super clean. Okay, your SAT word, a plethora. I remember when I learned that from my SATs. So let, no, really, let's go to the beach. Are y'all coming? Let's all go. I'm not going to the beach on Labor Day weekend. Why? No. <laughs> First up, it is still Corona season. It is. I don't want it. <laughs> Listen, y'all ain't hear salt water kills the ro- corona. Don't start those lies. Now it's the opposite. Remember before, <laughs> like breathing could cause it. Now everything cures it. Like they just tell us whatever they want us to, want us to know to like feed their egos and their stories. salt water cures everything. That's what they say. It you got a sore life. throat. You got an infection in your foot. You got a cut. You go right into salt water. Yeah, you you only got to right go to the boardwalk for it though. <laughs> You can travel that far for it. How about you, Granny? You coming to the beach with us? I might. I haven't really had like a beach day. Like, Come you know. on. We'll do Amina's house beach day. <laughs> All right. So listen, I got ugly feet, so I'm wearing socks on the beach. No, you're not. Yes, no, I you are can. not. I don't Very care. Very tacky. Very tacky. <laughs> I don't care. You keep them smelly things it contained inside <laughs> them you, socks, dear. okay? Thank you. Thank you for understanding my struggle. Appreciate that. So are we going? I'm, I'm down. Dex is not down. No, no, man. I just have a, I'll be having a hot... First off, I've been doing... I don't understand how anybody's going to the beach. Like, what have y'all been working on and stuff like that? I'm fat. Like, I've been eating well, during quarantine. I haven't been... Dex, I've only been one, and I didn't know... That I was fat until I got on a plane. This <laughs> <laughs> when I got off, so long story short, I had to go to the hospital last week, but I'm okay from my car accident. Mm-hmm. And they said, Are you having shortness of breath? I said, To be honest, I did yesterday, but I realized it's because I'm overweight, not because I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, small, that's a small victory there. A little uh, different. The I mean, nurse what? started laughing. I said, I got to be honest with myself. I know what it is. <laughs> Wait, so you don't want to go because you're fat? Me? Absolutely. We can Photoshop <laughs> you in all the pictures, Dexter. It's okay. That's what they're doing now, right? Drop that gut right out, sir. <laughs> I don't know the app, but I'll find abs. one for you. Can you give me some abs? Nina? I'll give you pecs too, oh, no. Dex. <laughs> I'll give you some pecs, some abs. You'll be ready to go. This is for me too. You skinny as hell, boy. You need to eat. I'm a, I'm a sex symbol. That's that's what this is. This is a sex symbol body. <laughs> Let me you see gave yourself that title. Huh? You gave yourself that title. Nah, nah, nah. That's why everybody called me. They introduced me as that. 
Sex lot. symbol first. Oh, is that is that so? Yeah. Since when? Since <laughs> 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 Gina asked for real concern slash <laughs> shade. The news to me. You had the earring like since what? That was you watch. I've been around you a long time. I never heard you. Mm -mm, never heard that. COVID. You on every podcast now. Bitches want to give you the ass. That's what it is. <laughs> that ain't it either. He's the <laughs> someone said he's the pod god. <laughs> yeah, they, they always saying something. I, I can't do multiple things at once. <laughs> I think everybody does multiple things though. Your your definition of multiple things is like 10 times the rest of us. Like you <laughs> <laughs> he does like an Instagram skit, mm -hmm. three podcasts. A flyer, a comedy. <laughs> I'm just trying stuff, but we're going to see. So, Dex, you coming? Dex. I won't be at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> we resolved all your issues. No, I'm going to pass. Uh, <laughs> let's get, to, get into what's in our feed. So, if I see one more Brandy and Monica meme, yeah. one more. <laughs> Okay, so can we talk about how my assessment was correct? We Did can talk not... about how you think your assessment is correct. I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one? Because um, the assessment that I think Brandy is better than Monica, that Brandy thinks she's better than Monica, definitely was proven correct in that versus battle she was like oh tupac mentioned me oh biggie mentioned, biggie me. mentioned me oh oh Look. i got whitney is, is introing my track Bro, i was like girl in that impossible i was like oh <laughs> is well facts are facts <laughs> she ain't lying sneak cinderella right on in <laughs> right before the track right like we like, like girl I'm surprised she didn't sit, uh, sneak in Mo to the... Yeah. To the, you heard her saying that legally she couldn't, so they must have got clearance on the songs or whatever because she kept saying, like, I can't, I can't, and then she whispered to Monica, why? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was confused I, by that, like, if they're your songs, but maybe because it's on Netflix right now, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That can make sense. So, Dex, you try to throw some shade during the battle. And I'm surprised your followers quickly shut you down. That's what that's what I do. I can't help it. And to be honest with you, like I, I was listening initially, and I was like, after we had talked last week, I I listened to like a lot of their songs, or whatever, and I was like, you know what? Like I think it's kind of evenly matched. Like I think they both have like a lot of like really big hits from the past, a couple things like in the last couple years, and then like nothing like right now. And when I was listening to them, like okay, like it's kind of cool, whatever. But I was like Team Brandy, so I was just like joking like put it out there whatever but like overall i think it was a pretty good battle like the first 10 songs but then at towards the end it just kind of like drained a little bit and i hated the conversation piece between the two of them because it's just like it's exactly what you said like brandy really thinks that she's better than monica like yeah well, she's like oh you can't say the word oh my daughter you got to close your ears and she's right like, daughter's 50 like what are you doing right i forgot <laughs> how old her daughter was like at first i'm picturing the ride like small and then when somebody's like, yo, she's 19. I'm like, come on now, dog. Even her. And like I said, she definitely heard her. Hoe. Her uncle is Ray J. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact, too. That's a fact. Now, I was, I was just surprised at how many songs that I just remembered that Brandy had, like, just, just listening to it. I'm like, oh, snap. Because remember, you know, last week we talked about it. I'm like, off the top of my head, I don't know how many I know until you press play on them. Uh, but it definitely was uh, it definitely was catty. There was a lot of catty stuff going on up there, but they they looked beautiful, both of them. Uh, the music was both incredible, you know, up to par. But yeah, it was definitely some uh, some little weird energy on that stage last night. Yeah, like I was like, is this like regular like shade for us, or this is like real shade? Is the, yeah. is this shade toned down, or this is just how it is? Right, right, right. right. I think they both try really hard to mm -hmm. play it off like they're good, but like little subtleties really came out. Like Dex, I think you really hit the nail on the head when you said last podcast that I think Brandy just says whatever comes to her mouth. Yeah, you could tell. And that. she doesn't really think. And Monica be like, "Bitch, I will kick down the door and smack you, bitch." 
<laughs> and Monica said that, like, I'm real. Like, right. You're going to get the real me. The one right. thing I do think was funny, too, was when I think Brandy would know she went too far. So she tried to make it like, oh, I'm just playing. And bring up something, like, cute that they could, like, Monica kind of laugh about while she was sitting over there with her missing head, like, about to go at her. So I did think, like, okay, so she has the awareness that she may have gone a little too far, but then she kept doing it. Yeah, like, Brandy be trying to joke with her like they're friends. Like, you guys are toting a very fine line. You are not friends, so keep it cute and keep it cordial. Like, when she came up and kicked her her leg, Monica, Brandy was like, oh, I got worried. I got scared. Like, girl, did you really have to say that? I kind of wanted her to kick you in the face after that. Like, come on, girl. (laughs) Brandy wanted us to know that Monica put her hands on her at some point. Yeah. She she mentioned it a couple times. At one point, she was just like, when Monica played, I think it's so gone, that, you know, that line or whatever, Monica was like, you know, I had to kick down doors and smack chicks, and Brandon was like, I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they was going back and forth. But and even when, but even then, Brandy was like, oh, The Boy Is Mine was my song. Yes! Oh, I, my that God! That was the shadiest part of the night! Shade! Because all people know is that they were on the song together. So if she really wanted to present this unity kind of thing, she should have said, I am really excited about collaborating on this song together. We really came up with something really, right. really amazing and, you know, transformative. And instead she was like, oh, we were up against each other. And I think other people I did that. And this was my else. song. I want it on my song. All right. Like, say, my song, my song. I was like, okay, we didn't need that. Because we were all waiting for that moment. But let me tell y'all, people's comments had me dying. Like, come on, y'all. Y'all go ahead and DM me. This is going too long. I got to get these kids up for Zoom. <laughs> right. Or the debate of was Monica wearing, you know, thigh-high <laughs> boots or were there pants? I'm like, why is everybody concerned with her pants or her but, boots? Because it was interesting. When I first logged in, I was about 10 minutes late. When I first logged in, it was just like, hold on. What are they? But she looks nice. And mm-hmm. then it was like, hold on, they go all the way up. Then it's interesting. It's like, so are they pants? Like, what? What is really going on? It was just very interesting as she sat there. But also, if you have someone sit there and watch you for three long hours, three hours that thing was, we're going to notice everything, every yeah. crack in the room and everything, because like three hours. Yeah. Hey, Brandy really prepared for this. I really enjoyed the poems, even though at one point I'm like, okay, girl, another poem. I thought yeah, it was. Where Monica was like, and they were like, Monica said, like, <laughs> right. I thought it was cute at first. I'm like, okay, she came prepared. But on her fifth poem, I'm like, girl, you should have done poetry hour. Like, this is verses. The funny thing, too, is I thought they were also throwing shade at other people, like, freely. Like, the usher, usher. Shade. Like, it was so much just they talking about different songs but like the shade was just everywhere just flying around the room yeah it was weird it was like shady but uplifting <laughs> <laughs> so i was very conflicted <laughs> because i felt like wow ladies you guys are amazing i love you but then like in the same breath i'm like ooh, that was shady girl <laughs> like when they were it. when they were singing back and forth the boy is mine and monica clearly did not want to sing and brandy's hitting every note i was like oh my god this is so beautiful but then i was like damn this is shady no how about all night when she kept being like come on i thought you was gonna sing i wanted you to sing i wanted and monica kept being like no yeah. Or when Monica's like, oh, my voice at now is not the same as 50-year-old Monica. And then Brandy's like, no, girl, you sound great. And she was yeah. like, no, I don't. She was like, yes, you do. She was like, no, I don't. Don't ask me again. I was like, ooh. Brandy was fishing for compliments with that, though. Like, she kept yeah. saying, like, I can't hit those notes no more. Yeah. And Brandy's like, yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And it's like, and she kept doing it. You want her like, to no, say No, I can't. My fault is not like that. It's not. And she was like, okay, it is. Right, but you can't hit these notes, but the whole session, you're like, ooh, Hitting the notes. <laughs> oh, I got my falsetto tonight, girl. So I think it was, like, just an awkward of, like, I think Brandy was trying a lot harder than Monica was. And at one point, I, you know, I think Monica handled it well, but I just feel like maybe they just have completely different personalities 
And even if they didn't have beef, some people just don't get along because of their personalities. Yeah. And it's just up here, bubbly, happy, go lucky. She's bragging about everything. Monica seems a lot more humble and down here and just more kind of down to earth. And she kind of will feel out the room before she gets too comfortable. I feel like Brandy's the one that comes in the room loud, you know? Yeah. She, uh, the other, the, the shady's meme of the night that I love said, Monica, I wrote this when I was in the second grade. Brandy, I recorded the whole album in daycare. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it did make me realize like, yo, they were so young. And we were so young listening to this music, going through these relationship issues in these songs that but we ain't really had no real relationship issues right like i didn't like you know we didn't understand it then because we were young ourselves yeah but the interesting thing was when they were like you know we had beef but you have to think we were 12 we were young we didn't even know how to deal with it and they're still doing the same things yes. <laughs> yeah. like every there you know there's this competitive kind of thing going on and i think it's more and check me if I'm wrong. I think it's more on the Brandy side. Because even, even when Monica was like, oh, I recorded this song when I was pregnant. She was just telling her story. Here come Brandy talking about, well, I recorded the whole Full Moon album when I was pregnant. Like, damn, girl. <laughs> I think, like, Brandy. Competitive one. She yeah, like, Brandy one. has a better voice. She does. But I do feel like she felt a little bit threatened by Monica, so she would make those comments when I do feel like Monica was just trying to be like, let's just be, you know, it is what it is, but she felt like she had to kind of one-up her or everything. Yeah. And then I was wondering, I'm like, why does Monica keep looking off to the side, like annoyed? Ray J was on the side the whole time doing the most. The absolute most. <laughs> and I was like, now I understand why Monica had that face on. Like, it was a whole bunch of foolishness happening in the background. <laughs> Anytime Ray J around. Anytime. Always foolishness. I will say I enjoyed it, though. I did. I enjoyed it. It was so fun. good. I was tired. Because then I had to go to D-Nice for the after party. I was like, D-Nice, I can't do this <laughs> It's I midnight. After I'm glad they wrapped it up so fast. After the boy is mine, literally they just walked off. I'm like, thank the Lord. I thought they was gonna do some drawn out like Rick Ross and Two Chains did. They walked off to Brandy talking about a tour that we know nothing about. Oh yes. We're not even having concerts right now. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Brandy <laughs> wants to go on tour. Well, and I, I don't noticed think Ray J posted it, and Ray J said trying to get this tour together, and it was a picture. Of him with Brandy and Monica. Of, of who would who would Brandy and Monica? Ray J. No, sir. Wait a minute. No, sir. So <laughs> no, he didn't say he was going to be on the tour. He Wait. Made it seem like he was trying to convince them both to do a tour. Why someone said in the comments y'all could have had Ray J sing one wish during the intermission. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> I was like not one wish. I love Ray J. He is the funniest. He's the funniest person ever. Most beyond the earth person ever, but he's character. He's a character. Or what's the other song I hit it first? <laughs> hit it. Hit. Smash it. <laughs> all right moving on oh what a week i mean chadwick boseman ah just rest in peace to a, a legend and a hero just amazing it's crazy because i literally the last time i spoke about him on the radio we were talking about how he looks sick you know and i remember saying you know, rumors are is that he's preparing for a role. It never even crossed anyone's mind that he could be battling colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So, um, so sad. I mean, and it's crazy how we're seeing his impact now, like after the fact. It's never while someone's alive. Yeah. It's always it's after the fact, like you start putting everything together and the speeches and you know, the, the, the different talks and the interviews and you start kind of assessing their career. It is just sad that it took for him to pass away for people to really like string it all together to see what an impact. 
yeah. his career and his life had. Yeah, definitely was sad. I was going to say my uh, somehow my mom, I don't know how, and she doesn't even have TikTok, but she somehow found this interview from when he was um, doing press for 21 Bridges, which was super recent. And they were asking, the interviewer was asking questions like, how does he feel? Like the reaction will be to the movie and about Black Panther 2. And he kept responding, I'm dead. And she actually doesn't know how, like she says it, she asked him another question and he says, it doesn't matter, I'm dead. So she doesn't know how to respond. So then that's when she went to Black Panther 2. And he said, I'm dead. So she actually said, well, we don't want you to be dead. So, and then he kind of walked off. And this interview, I guess, was in like January or December. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. And it was, it, it was like, and he looked at her and straight in the camera and said, it, you could tell like, as an interviewer, she was like, uh, okay, so how do you think this? And he was like, I'm dead, so. And he literally just said it one more time and walked off. And it was just like, wow, like, and that's what they were, it said, like, we don't pay enough attention sometimes to things when they're right in front of our face. Like, people probably thought he was joking or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I mean, we just got to be, I guess, thankful for the time that he was here and he was able to do, you know, these great things and great performances that, you know, we can look at forever. And, you know, some people don't get a chance to, you know, uh, I guess, take information with them. Like everything that we need to know is already here, like interviews like that, you know, uh, other interviews or even through movies. So, you know, he's definitely going to be missed, but I feel like he definitely did enough to be remembered for a long time. Yeah. I'm just I, impressed at how he pushed through for four years. I yeah. mean, and I, you know, when I was watching the tribute, the Black Panther tribute on ABC to see all the stunts and all like the physical work, he had cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's also like a lesson to other people too. Like a lot of us, we have nothing wrong with us that we know of. And like, we like, take things for granted like I know and at the beginning we talked about Garnett how he does so many things and I think honestly like that's how people should be living their lives now like you should be pushing yourself and doing as much as possible because you don't know how long you have also yeah. I think for us in the entertainment um, space we should really watch how we like what we promote too like I actually again for like the 15th time I followed the shade room because after Chadwick Boseman died, like they posted it, people were, you know, were reacting to that. Then the very next day, they posted this thing with Takashi and another rapper, and apparently, yeah. the person used the bathroom on themselves, and like that, that was like this joke or whatever. And I'm like, we can't do that. Like as a society, as a culture, we have to let that stuff go. Like we really can't be that way anymore. I really feel like it's just it's bad being like that. Yeah, I was gonna say one of his uh, co-stars in uh, Five Blood, the Five Bloods that he did with a uh, Spike Lee, he said, he said that he actually feels really bad. He said it was his first time working with Chadwick and his wife said, so how is it working with him? And he used the word, he's from London. So he used the word, he's precious, meaning like he's a prima donna. And he said, and I said that because he had like a massage therapist that was there. Somebody was doing massaging his feet. Somebody else was doing his back. His girlfriend at the time, now wife was there every day and he started crying. He was like, because now that I realize they were literally just trying to take care of him, to give him enough strength to get through that. And mm -hmm. that's what he said. He's like, so here I was kind of judging him like, oh, Black Panther went through his head. He got all these people pampering him. And he's like, and little did I know that that was like what he needs battling mm -hmm. the cancer and the surgeries to be able yeah. to get through this film. Yeah, that's why I'm really careful about how I present a story. Like I, when they were talking about what he looked like, I saw people making fun of him. But the way that I chose to present that information was he's preparing for a role. That's the explanation for this. Now, oh my God, he looks like Skeletor, whatever the hell people said, you know. Um, even the Megan situation, while people were joking, you know, I chose to present it as this woman got shot. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so, but again, sometimes people get caught in this thing of I'm trying to entertain or I'm trying to get like an, a, a, a laugh or an emotion. And sometimes you cross those lines and those barriers and you don't realize 
you know, the extent until something tragic happens. Like we were talking about Big Sean and the I Don't F With You song. When he made the song, I remember interviewing him and asking him, is this song about anyone in particular? He had just broken up with Naya Rivera, you know? And he said, he didn't say, yeah, it's about her. You know, he said, this is about anybody going through a breakup, you know, and and he made a very general um, kind of, he did a very, made gave me a very general response, but we knew who the song was about. He didn't know she was going to pass away. Right. Yeah. So, like, how does that sit on your conscience now? Like, in that moment, you were angry and, you know, he didn't intend to hurt her. He didn't know what was going to happen. He was just venting. How many artists do we have singing about their lives or the difficult things that happen and we're cracking jokes or, you know, Mary J. Blige and that, and you never know what tomorrow holds that maybe that person doesn't live. Yeah. Yeah. I think Naya Rivera is a perfect example of that too. Like her one single that she put out was Sorry, which was like a diss track to all Big Sean's ex-girlfriends. And then you guys don't even end up together. You know what I mean? So it's just like, we got to be careful with what we put out there because we just don't know what the future holds. Yeah. Well, Omari Hardwick is learning in that the hard way because he's been getting dragged for his post that he put up about Chadwick Boseman. And it's very, very long <laughs> but a lot of it talks about him and how he just feels like he lost time. I guess it's just the regret of him not getting enough time. And uh, I actually want to point out a couple of things. He talked about him winning the award for power and how it was an honor being one of Chadwick's biggest competitors and friends and that he's going to pick up the crown. Like, we don't even know this man's been buried yet, and he's already talking about picking up the crown. I mean, it, it, I just, you know, I get where Omari was coming from, but yeah. it's just the wrong choice of words, and um, this is not how you memorialize someone kind of comparing yourself to them, you know? See, and I didn't take it like that. Like, everybody took it as a Black Panther reference. First of all, again, like, for all of these people that knew, know him, and know him even more like i'm still like i saw him in october didn't know like these are people that you whether they see him every day you have some type of relationship with them and it's kind of like a shock which is why probably like michael b jordan going through it and certain other people took a long time to speak because a it's hard and they want to make sure what they say is worded properly and in the best light we do know amari howard is very emotional and kind of reacts I took it like he meant more because he talked about how Chadwick, you know, made so many strides as a black, well, well in his own words, because he uses a lot of deep words, as a black <laughs> actor. So when he said that pick up the crown, I thought he was saying, you know, like the goal, you know, continue to grow it in that field for black actors, not necessarily like a Black Panther reference or anything like that. So I didn't take it like that, but just, and again, knowing Amari Hardwick, you know, I have a friend personally that died that Amari Hardwick only met once, and he gave the most longest heartfelt post over that one meeting, you know, to this person. So I know that, like, he it's almost like he's an overthinker, so it yes. might rub people some way the wrong way, but it's just like, it's, you know, I don't think he meant it in harm. Right, I agree, but I think his comparison to Chadwick Boseman's career and the roles well, he said that because that, and if you watch the clip, it's from the NAAC Image Awards. They were up for the same award. So that's what he was actually talking about. But again, right in, and it just seemed, because if you watch and listen to the video, he talks as he accepts the award. He's talking about Chadwick when he accepts the award because they were just up for it. And he kept saying, like, it was just an honor to be against him. Like, he couldn't believe he won and da-da-da-da. And him, and, like, so when he accepted the award, all he was doing was talking about Chadwick instead of himself. You know what I mean? Dana, did you just become his publicist? That was really <laughs> good. Like, that was I don't know. Murray, hit me up. <laughs> well, his wife does his publishing stuff, so oh, you okay. might want to fall back, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but wasn't he the same one who kissed Beyonce? Like, didn't he kiss yeah. Beyonce like this? Twice. In double ACP. Twice. You know you, he probably, don't, don't, don't go to those awards anymore. It, they <laughs> tend to get you in trouble. Now, I, I think we just got to be careful, like, exactly what we're doing, like, as a society. Like, how can we tell someone how to how, how to grieve? Like, 
you know, we we don't know chat with Bozeman. Well, at least, you know, I don't or the mass public. We've never met them. We just see them on TV. There's really no connection outside of what they show us on TV. And for what it seems like, you know, they were very close. And basically what we're telling is, if, if, you know, if somebody told you about, you know, what to write or how to feel if you, like a close cousin or a close friend of yours died, it's like, wow, like, you know, like, we have our own relationship. So I'm pretty sure their relationship has something to do of a more competitive nature and things like that. I know I have friends where that's that's how we joke. 90% of the time, that's our little thing and that's how we get through it. And, you know, just him grieving, like, yeah, he's it is kind of supposed to, you know, be about him in a sense. I can understand that mindset because he's dealing with the loss of you. You get what I'm saying? So now he has to work things out and figure it out. So I think he may have uh, gave too much information to people that can't understand, you know, and maybe, you know, that's his only fault. But like y'all said, he's a very generous person with his words and very passionate. So he felt the need to share it. Damn, y'all just... (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean, because like, like like somebody saying twisted to us, it. like, why y'all crying over chair with you ain't know him? You know what I mean? Like, how can we say like that's like somebody said, Oh, well, you shouldn't have wrote your post, Shana, like you know him. It's how I felt, like how he, you know, the image to me. And again, if this is a personal friend, you guys work together, and definitely we gotta think about it as black actors trying to get roles. It's not too many out there unless you want to star in the Tyler Perry film. Like, you know, so it Listen, is don't shade Tyler Perry because they just had Brandy and Monica was he down there. About how Chadwick, he widened that field with what he did. And, and that's why I say when he say, like, pick up the crown, because again, Chadwick talked about being typecast and then these roles. Like, it's time for Black male actors to be able to be in different roles and not you know, Denzel winning an Oscar in training day because he was a crooked cop. You know, you know what I mean? Like, so. You know what, though? What I saw online was more of the backlash came with the competitor um, statement because mm-hmm. people didn't feel like they were in a competitive space, I guess. When, mm-hmm. you, com- when you compare their works, I mean, he was on Being Mary Jane and Power. This guy was did 42. This guy did black right. panther so i think that's more so i didn't have a problem with it but when i saw on social media just people felt like he was at a place for even saying that they were competitors uh it goes back to what we were just talking about how like we're just we're not nice people like as society <laughs> as a whole like we really were like he really there's really nothing he could have said and that's <laughs> that people probably wouldn't have dragged him for you know what i mean like, right. like we drag first and think about it later. Like we, and we don't care. Like people right. who dragged him, like they could listen to this podcast right now. And I think Shana and I think Garnett make great point. People will listen to that and they will be like, I don't care. I'm still going to drag him. Right. It's just and, how we are. Yeah. And like, I, and I agree that they might have felt like, you know, I, I'm not an actor, you know, going up against like, well, you got that role. I'm gonna try and get this role. You know, we, we don't know what kind of conversations they mm-hmm. had and what that feels like as another black actor that's been grinding and you see like, okay, all right, he can do this. Maybe I can step out and not be ghost and be a drug dealer and do some other roles because that's all people see me as. And that's what I kind of wanted to say about this. I think that Omari sometimes comes off to people if you don't have a real conversation with him as, I saw someone call him a narcissist. Um, I've seen people call him arrogant. I think with Omari, he's been placed in these being Mary Jane roles and he's very talented. Like, I think we saw glimpses of that in power. And I think his whole career, he's done other things besides that, you know, but I think his whole career, he's been trying to step outside of that box, you know? So um, his acting is incredible you know, and um, I think people haven't seen him enough in these different kinds of roles to assess that. You know, I just thought it was very unfair to kind of minimize his his acting to, okay, well, you 
you were in being Mary Jane in power, bro. This guy was in Black Panther in 42. Right, what are you right, talking right. about? You know, but just from knowing Omari, he has taken some of the, those roles where he felt like he was a better actor than that. And that's why he left being Mary Jane. You and know, I was say, before Black Panther, people talked about Chadwick Boseman. Oh, he only playing movies where he's playing somebody else. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people are like, not, and then that moment happened, and, the, and then they appreciated the 42, the Marshall, the right. get on up. But prior to that, it was like, oh, that's all he can do is play somebody yeah. else. Right. All right. Well, moving on, this is um, very. Uh, <laughs> that was a little heavy. Everybody. It's weird though. I, I think that was this was probably the best conversation I've been in concerning that. I feel like everything else when they talk about it, it's so draining and depressing. I feel like this really it gives it gave me a different perspective. I think you guys did a really good job with that conversation. I really do. Like I'm it was it was impressive. It was good to be a part of it. Yes, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so look try to go to the beach with her. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, so um, let's talk about Niecy Nash marrying a woman. Now, I don't know how this woman identifies. I always get confused, and I don't want to offend anybody, but I just don't know anymore. Like, I don't know how to refer to people sometimes. Um, I don't know if I should say a woman, a trans woman. I don't know if she's... I just don't know anymore. Um, and I'm afraid to offend people. I feel like I walk on eggshells sometimes when I'm talking about this, even on air, because I didn't even know how to kind of explain that she married a woman. Should I say she's a woman? I mean, I just, I don't know. So it's like, this is very, this is very, um, ti it's timely to last week's conversation. Yeah, about that's why I started laughing and I wasn't laughing over that. I was laughing because my girlfriend had listened to the podcast faithfully. She tried to check me like, uh-uh, because the transvestite is a person that has two body parts. I was like, that's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> and that, now that I do know. <laughs> it's so I thought the reason why I'm laughing, but I do agree with you. When I saw the picture, you know, you don't know unless, you don't want to offend somebody by their right. pronoun, but you don't know, like, unless you know them and you're introduced, like, Hey, this is Shayna. She is like, you don't know unless you meet them. Yeah. And then like, even the other day, I was super impressed, Shayna. You were like the LGBTQ and then you added another continent. Okay, that's that, that just got added on. That's weird. The continent? Con no, con consonant or a consonant <laughs> or whatever. I learned that from one of the young people because I didn't know what the IA was and I still, I'm confused. It's like, What's IA? Like uh, interested in something with the A. They add, they, it's a recent add-on. Yeah, again, I didn't even know there was an IA. I remember you and I, we were having a conversation. I was like, oh. Yeah. So I missed. got married. Yeah. And, and it's, she had just got divorced from her husband. And nobody knew that she was into women. Not that we need to know. But well, I think it's funny because I had an argument with a married girlfriend probably about a year and a half ago maybe two years, and she kind of tried to, she sent a, 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 a article or something, Nisi Nash and her husband at the time were like on a podcast, and it was talking about how to please your husband, and Nisi Nash was talking about submitting to your husband, and she was talking about how you need to give your husband a head every day. So when I saw this, <laughs> I was just confused. And I was like, now here, I, you know I really wanted to text that girlfriend, but I didn't do it. Because we kept being like, why are you listening to somebody else? Whatever works for you and your husband, that's what you do. And I want to be like, man, you were arguing us now. Is she over here not even with the husband? She changed her whole makeup. Yeah, but she might have been getting head every night. Either way, you don't. But she didn't say that. She was talking about how the wife has to do that every day. Well, man, maybe, maybe her stopped. wife is doing it every day. <laughs> maybe she stopped. And her husband was like, I, I ain't about that life. Yeah, but um, I just wanted to bring it up, you know, because we literally just had this conversation. Do you care about who your partner dates mm -hmm. after you? And it's like, she just fully got a divorce and now she's married to a woman. Like, yeah. she was like, oh, I'm tired of this penis. I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> and and I, 
they said, you know, they, I guess they had a relationship before it was publicly known that, you know, she got her divorce as well. So it seemed like, you know, they at least known each other for some time now. Okay, Garnett with the T. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I'm about to say, well, you know, my FBI skills, I had to go back on Instagram and it looks like the girl had something to do with like the show claws or, or somehow like that was integrated so she has been around for some time. I don't know if she worked on the set. Right. So whatever, she's a musician. But, she's a singer. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so she had was. been around like either people on the set because there were very, it was a lot of pictures of her and Nisi together from the set. Yeah. I love, I, I love the dedication that you guys have. Like, <laughs> hold on. I'll, I'll go ahead. One thing I know is that. I love the outfit that, I love their wedding outfits. Me and my fiance have been looking at like, you know, outfits to wear for the wedding. I sent her Nisi Nash's dress and I'm like, I like those dress. I like those shoes. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the Gucci belt on, on the, the, the person that she married. I don't know about that belt, but everything else, I love the look. And for me, just really quickly, I don't check for Nisi Nash, like on a regular, and I don't think most people do. I don't think Nisi Nash is anybody's like person that you're like, I gotta see what Nisi Nash is doing. Like, I think we watch her stuff, we watch Reno 911, we watch Claws, but, and, and we loved her and when they see us, but I don't think we really like check for Nisi Nash like that. You know what I mean? Like she mm -hmm. been walking around with this woman, kissing her in like the, the, in the middle of the street and we wouldn't know because she's not on our radar. Oh, okay. So now this comes up and everybody wants to have an opinion on this. Like we, you weren't talking about this girl two months ago. Right, right. I like that about that, about her though. She's very low key. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's hard. She gets a couple more roles and I don't think she'll be low key anymore. Just a couple more roles, like big roles. I I don't think, and she's moving towards it. I don't think you choose to be low key or not. I think <laughs> that for you, and I think Nisi Nash will remain low key. I'm just gonna remain quiet when this. Show. That this was shady, y'all. It's the truth. <laughs> that was shady, y'all. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna just put it out there. I had a not so nice encounter with her, and it wasn't anything I did. But now when I see this, I'm like, well, maybe liking me or something i don't know <laughs> she's very mean to me for no reason like i don't even know why maybe she was having a bad day no she was purposely nice to all the guys oh it was like it was like to a point to make sure i knew wow. maybe she, maybe she felt intimidated by you maybe she liked me i don't know she could have been hitting on you <laughs> Maybe we don't you know I wasn't picking first up of her all, advances. First of all, let's just say this. Just because she married a woman doesn't mean that she's naturally attracted to women. She could have just fell in love with this person who was her friend. That <laughs> happens. She was just married to a man. Like you, you, okay. you can develop yeah. a friend. You Dex, don't do that. You can develop a friendship with someone and then become attracted to them. Even let me tell you. Some w gay women have swag. I'm not like, not like, not women. You have to oh, like women yeah. to be able one to do that. <laughs> I think, I think, I don't know. And this is a question that I would love to ask Nisi, to be honest. Is this, a, have you always been into women or is this a situational thing where you really love this woman because she's been important in your life? It happens. Yeah. You know, but, she could have liked men and then met this woman and started dealing with this woman and now she likes this woman. Yeah, I agree. But that means and, you like women now. I was That's just gonna say, I have a lot of, well, not a lot of, but I have, you know, lesbian friends who will tell you that they always liked women, they just dated men. Like, they always had an attraction to women. It just may not have been where they went. So I just think you have to like women. Why can't she just be bisexual? Yeah, you're bisexual, but I'm saying like, they made the choice after a while to be then be lesbian. But again, it wasn't that they didn't like men or never dated men. Oh my God, going. this is a good conversation. So you guys don't think that you, as, as a, I'm talking about a woman, not a man. As a woman, you can't be not attracted to women ever and then meet a woman and be attracted to that woman? Um, you don't think that's possible? I just think that's like, Put just like that's making that one person seem so amazing that like you know it's it's like yeah but you don't know maybe she you know starts dealing with this woman she was like oh my god this is this has been what I've been missing my whole life yeah it's it's a possibility 
Yeah, okay. I, I do think it makes sense. But if you do that, though, that does mean that makes you a lesbian, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you have to have an attraction to women. Like, you have to have some type of attraction to women. Dex is hilarious. Yeah. I don't know. I would love to ask her. Because she was married to a whole man. You act like it doesn't happen all the time. No, I know. But I would love to have a conversation with some of these women. Yeah. You know? Let's still tell you that they always deep down had an attraction. And mm -hmm. it could be that their attraction to men at the time was just stronger, but they deep down always had some type of attraction to a woman. Okay. Because I've been around gay women where I'm like, oh, wow. Well, what? <laughs> well, what? I mean, like, oh, I've been like, girl, you got swag. <laughs> like, I'm not attracted to women, but damn, girl, you got some. I've been around women that have like, and you know, I used to play basketball when I was a kid. I've been around a lot of women that have a lot of swag, you know. This and I'm apply for men. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, if you're making this rule for women, would that apply for men? That what they can mean? find a man that's completely amazing. And that does not make them I don't I don't know. I think there's more stigma when it comes to men. But why can't there be a dude that got swag? How you said somebody got like Yeah, maybe it could happen. There could be a man that doesn't think he's attracted to men and then all of a sudden meets a man and That's figures what we're out saying is it can't happen. It's like they already have some kind of attraction. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, I'm never going to be like, Garnett is the one for me. <laughs> I've never looked at another man before, but now that I'm looking at him, that's it. That's it. I'm moving over. <laughs> I'm moving out. <laughs> I think you guys are being very small-minded, and you need to open up a little bit and be okay with the possibilities of something new coming your way and you changing. That's fair. You that's know? Fair. Yeah. I talk about dating another, like, race. You're talking about love is love. Love is love, baby. Sometimes you fall in love with people's like, personalities. You're saying it like something new, like oh, okay, like I never dated a white guy, and I dated a white guy. It's I would, you know, who I would I love to talk to, Mimi. I would love to talk to Mimi and ask her because she's she's engaged to a woman. Yeah. And Mimi and Stevie always had attraction <laughs> with women. You already Not know the Jocelyn story. Jocelyn to put it out there. They had a threesome, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's a bad example. Let's move on. So, <laughs> so our topic. Maybe she was attracted to you, Shayna. Let's just erase that whole thing. I was just trying to give her the benefit of get maybe she she just was like, nah, I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe she liked you. She was trying to get in your pants. That that was it, Shayna. That's why she was mean to you. <laughs> I, I, we, I didn't know we were in the kindergarten when we were mean to people that we like, you know? But I don't know. Moving on, we need to interview someone. Yeah. We really do, because I have a lot of questions. And it, it's not even situational. It's like we need to interview a plethora of people. Yeah, I was going to say it needs to be men and women and whatever mm -hmm. their pronouns may be as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so our topic this week is when do you know you want to have sex with someone? Very related to the conversation we just had. <laughs> is there like, is there, a, is it, do you know from the first time? Immediately. You know, does it take real immediately? You definitely are going to end with this, not us. No, you guys too. No, no, no. Uh, this is the same uh, ugly question. I'm going to say, I'm not, I'm going to say immediately it's, it's also, it's almost to the point where at that point, you're doing something to make me not want to do it anymore. But initially, it's like, yeah, if I'm attracted to you, it's like you automatically going to know that it has the possibility of happening. Now it's up to this person to not mess it up. But Wait, so like you from see? From getting the number that you already, from getting the person's number. Yeah. Okay. That's probably why I got a number. That's yeah, why I'm, I get what you're saying, Jack. So this, this, but you because I might not even talk to you if I'm not interested, to be honest with you. I got you. But, but that is a good point, too, where I got to know I'm interested already because there, I, I guess there has to be situations where, you know, you, you're attracted to a person, but you're not sexually attracted to that person. And maybe that might turn on later on down the line. You know, that's how friends end up becoming, you know, partners. So 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, so you guys, the second you see a woman, you know you want to have sex with her already? She doesn't have to open her mouth? There's no, like, vetting no, process? No. You got to open the mouth because I need to see what those teeth look like. <laughs> <laughs> but so, what, I, what I'm saying is, like, I, I guess the question was, like, at what point do you want to have sex with someone? Like, I can't, I, I, like, you guys have to get to know the woman. To do what? To want to have sex with her, no? Okay, at a certain point, I guess it depends what you're trying to do with it. Is it just so, are, are we just strictly sex and not like thinking about anything else? It's like, if I see you or, you know, if we have a conversation, you kind of know in first meeting and, you know, they say woman first five minutes, if he has a chance to sleep with me and I, it's, it's going to be the exact same thing for the men. It's like, okay, now, now you have to open your mouth. Is she intelligent? Does he have this going on? Does he have... We have our checklist too. Where it's like, all right, well, maybe she's just a friend. Like that can change immediately too. So that was just my view on it. I'm disappointed was, in you, Dexter. I know. <laughs> I thought you had standards. <laughs> now I do, but but like, like realistically speaking, like say we watch TV or something like that, right? And you know how those Real Housewives shows come on. I always pick which one of the girls I like fully based on how they look. I don't really care about their personalities or anything like that. I just pick like who's the best looking one. And that's usually like what I go with. And I think that as a man is because like you're sexually attracted to that woman. And I'm not saying that I would naturally just go up and be like, I'm gonna have sex with you or whatever. But it's just like, you know, already. It's not one of those things where I have to get to know you to know that I want to have sex with you. I might not do it. I just might want to do it because I think you're attracted. See, I think it's different for women. I can be sexually attracted to you, but that doesn't mean I want to have sex with you. I, I was just about to say, I think we have an initial attraction, but I don't immediately feel like I want to have sex with you. Like, I have to really get to know you because I've definitely dated some people that I'm like, it ain't no way. Like, I, I just don't even want to take it to that. Like, I don't feel like it's even worth you being a number, being in a number. Like, you can't, I, I, like, there's just, there has to be some time that's built. It's funny that you bring this up because I've been watching Married at First Sight. You know, I'm obsessed with the show. And that's what happens, like how the guys are saying. Most of the guys are respectable of their new wives, but at the same time, they're like, oh, but if she asks me right now, like, it's going down. Where most of the women, even though they're quote unquote married, but they just met each other, they're like, I can't just have sex with him yet. Like, I know he's my husband, but I need to get to know him. Where the guys are like, she could ask me right now and we can go. Yeah, like I, you know how they, someone, I think, Arnett, you mentioned this, how women know within the first five minutes if they want to have sex with a man or not, right? I think, I think that's an inaccurate statement. I think we know within the first five minutes if we would, you know, if we're sexually attracted, but then there's more to actually wanting to. Like, oh, he's cute. I might give him the vagina, right? But then you might go out on a date. Then you figure out he's dirty. Mm -hmm. Then you figure out he's a mama's boy. Now all of a sudden you don't want to have sex with him. So it's like there, there's levels. It's not yeah. like, oh, I see you. You're cute. I want to have sex. It is definitely like not just because you took me out on a date. Like we're just going to have sex with two adults. Like... Like you said, it has to be all these other boxes that I feel like are checked. And again, some women are different. Some women, you know, if they just just want just sex, they just meet certain men just to do that, that check that box. So uh, I know for me, it definitely has to be a vetting period. And, right. it, and the difference too, I was going to say, is even when I know I might, I still might make you wait. Yeah. Where where are those women that that's not making no dudes wait? They have <laughs> sex on site. Um, where are those? Where are these women at? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? I recently had a conversation, and uh, this is why I wanted to talk about this because there was a guy months ago, maybe probably years ago at this point, that I was physically attracted to, and. The man can dress. I went to his house. His closet is color coordinated. I mean, he has style. He's good looking, has a great job, presents himself very well, right? So initially I'm attracted to him and I'm, I'm like, okay, I, this might be a guy I could have sex with. Like I would, I would take it there, right? 
But then I invite him over to my house. And then we're at my house and I just felt like the chemistry was off. And then because I felt like the chemistry was off, he wanted to stay the night because it was late. So I offered him the couch. So it, I don't think I've ever had a man. I mean, I could be wrong, but to my recollection, I don't think I've ever had a man who's come in my house the first time and immediately goes to the bed. Like, I don't think there, I, I think I, I, they go to the couch first and I see how they handle the couch, right? Well, that so, could go two ways, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you know? So it's like, I, so after I sent him to the couch, he disappeared for a month. Yeah. And I, Hold on, where the hell was this couch at? Why, why was he going for a month? Where was this? Couch? I would text him and he wouldn't answer me for a month. He was so then, so then uh, he ghosted me. <laughs> so a month later, he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I got busy with work. So I was like, I don't even want to talk to you anymore, bro. Thank you. It was, it was nice, you know, hanging out with you, whatever. So I haven't talked to him since. So I think last week I went out to dinner and I posted where I was and he texted me like, oh, I'm by you. Where are you? So now we're ha we start having conversation and, I, and you know, he's like try, kind of trying to insinuate that he wants to hang out. And I'm like, no, when we hung out the first time, you ghosted me for a month. And he was like, you sent me to the couch. <laughs> so I was like, what does that have to do with you ghosting? He says, that means I wasn't, you weren't interested in me. I said, no. That don't mean that. That means that I was unsure if I wanted to be sexual with you yet. So it got me to thinking, why is it for, like, for men, I sent him to the couch, and now in his book, I'm automatically not interested anymore, right? Because I won't have sex with him. But the for me- The first time he came to your house. Though. Right. Right. For me, I'm still trying to figure out, I find him sexually, I'm attra sexually attracted to him. I find him visual appealing, but I'm trying to figure out if I want to have sex with him. I don't know yet because I was, it was kind of like an awkward encounter. So I sent him to the couch and I'm like, okay, the next time we'll see how it goes. Maybe the next time we go upstairs, you know, but that's why I wanted to talk about this. Cause I'm like, in my mind, I wasn't ready to have sex, but in his mind, he was. Yeah, he, he probably just was, you know, used to certain things going a certain way. And that was just a habit that was created. And, you know, some some people don't take too kindly to that. Or, you know, I, I think, honestly, he probably dodged a bullet. I was just about to <laughs> honestly, like The best thing you could have did was to test him. It was like, you know, is, is he sane enough just to, you know, sleep downstairs for a night and then have the courtesy, you know, to call me back the next morning. Like, is he okay with just that? Because if you look at it, it's a win to even get a sleepover. Honestly, it's like just to be there to first, you know, like just relax, take your win, and be patient enough to see the next day. That's all. But more than likely, this would have went the same way, no matter what would have happened. He slept <laughs> on the couch, he ghosted you. If you had sex with him, he right. would have ghosted you. Ghost you. Right. And when he saw that you posted that you were in that area, he would have texted you either way. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Then I had a guy, okay, I had a guy that I actually let him in my bed and we just didn't even have sex. So it's like there's levels. Like even if you get in the bed, it doesn't guarantee that I even want to have sex with you. Like right. I just, there's so many levels, at least for me, but yeah, you guys clearly have no standards. <laughs> because obviously he's used to a certain type of girl like Garnessa, where are those girls? That's the kind of girl that he's used to. And it doesn't sound like he's like used to wanting to build a relationship at all. He just wants the bed. Right. Well, so thanks for that. No more girl. He can't even, he can't even come to the door. Oh no, mm. yeah. we didn't even hang out at all. I was, he was like, oh, well, if you text me tomorrow, I text you. I'm like, no, I'm not texting you, bro. Like, First of all, who says that? If you text me, I'll text you. Yeah, you dodged the whole bullet. I was the bullet. Save yeah. Me. Best thing he could have did was, you know, not text you back. Well, so for me, the moment I realize I want to have sex with someone is, and you know, the, the, this doesn't apply to every man. 
I, there's been a situation where I literally met a man and I fell so deep in love and I, I thought this was the one, you know, but normally, you know, that's because for whatever reason that man hit every box, but for sometimes, you know, it's like some people do things and it gives you a hesitation, you know, and you kind of fall back a little bit like, wait a minute, I don't know about this yet. So for me, I decide to have sex with someone when a, they do, I feel like they do something thoughtful. So it shows that they're like really, you know, caring and understanding for me, it's more of the patience of like, okay, if you can be respectful that these are my boundaries, I have, I, you know, I have more, I have an easier time kind of like letting my boundaries go, you know, and then it's just making sure you're not a damn weirdo, just getting to know you a little bit, you know, making sure you're clean, you don't live with your mama, you got a good job, you know, all the things that would make me be like, nah, I'm not having sex with this guy. What do I look like going to this guy's basement? He lives with his mom. So. Yeah, I don't necessarily have a specific checklist because every situation and relationship is different, but it's definitely like not an immediate, oh, I see him, even if I am attracted to him, it's not like an immediate thing that I'm definitely going to go that route with it. Okay. Well, Garnett, so it's going to teach you to be a little patient, okay? Nope. <laughs> and uh, Dex, you are already engaged, so you... you what i'm engaged so i don't even have to answer the question. <laughs> yeah <laughs> how about with your girlfriend you always you just it was immediate or your fiance no actually as you were talking i thought about that and like initially we started off as friends there was no there was like not a sexual thing like happening there but i think also my mindset was a little more mature in a sense and it's crazy because it was high school but i feel like i was more mature and that's not all i thought about but I think as I've gotten older and like going through college or whatever, like that was kind of the norm where it's like, you're not getting to know people. It's kind of like one night stands and all that kind of stuff like that in college. And I think that was like, I think, I think we get out of college and we still have that mindset. A lot of guys do because it was so, it wasn't like a challenge or whatever to have sex in college. You get out of college and you think that the real world is like that. But like, these are, like you just said, there are women who are like, I'm not about to go to your mom's basement. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah, doing that. It. And I think we have to, as men, like we always look and I think we get, we're like, oh, wow, she's attractive or whatever. I would have sex with her. But getting to that point of actually doing it, I think a lot of it does depend on the woman and how she carries herself. And then also like you and like where your maturity level is. Yeah, like you can go and try, you know, you can be like, damn, I want to have sex with this girl. But then when you hang around her, she smells funny. Like, See? I mean, and it's not even like you don't even look at women and be like, I would have I would have sex with her. Like you don't necessarily do that. At least I I never really done it like that. It's right. more so like, oh, she's attractive. Like if if they had, if I had the opportunity, I would do it. Like you look at the celebrities, like how we do all the celebrities. We don't actually know them, but we'd be like, oh, if I had the opportunity, I would. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So when do you know you wanted to have sex with your fiance? Like oh what? What, <laughs> the, what happened? <laughs> You know what? Because I'll give you an example. This, this guy did the most thoughtful thing for me once. And he bought me something and I didn't even ask for it. And it was so, and he sent it to my house. You and sick. I was like, wow, Lord. I'm sleeping Lord. with this man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, them panties is coming off because I didn't ask for it. I didn't, you know, it was like the most sweetest thing and thoughtful thing. And he sent it to my house and he next dated it. Mm. like i was like oh i would really that's like this nice. that's game and i was like wow i was like i'm sleeping with him <laughs> <laughs> at that amazon prime <laughs> it didn't it, it didn't happen though but in my mind i almost did <laughs> so dex what when was the when the light bulb go off for you um it was more so like in I don't know if I don't know if I'm getting trouble for this, but it was more so like one of those opportunity type of situations where it's like we were talking for a little bit, like you found like this common thing, like oh we like like each other, you know what I mean? It it it, it like the connection became something, and then like not even like a planned thing, it was like an opportunity that somewhat presented itself, and we like took advantage of. But I think it was like a very mutual connection after a very long period of time. 
Yeah. Mm, okay. Was that PG? I, I feel like that was PG. I just didn't want to get in trouble because she's going to- Yeah, that was all right. PG. You didn't do any violations. It's all right. I know some girls that know from their haircut if they're going to sleep with a man. Like, damn, it's, it's haircut. I'm starting that way. <laughs> I'm dropping them panties. Look at that haircut. <laughs> I got to next way. I got look at the next week. Yeah. Look at them sneakers. Mm. <laughs> that takes a little yeah. bit more for me. Yeah, Dex. I, I I thought you said something a little interesting. I felt like you. I could have took it the wrong way, but you used like school and stuff as far as like setting the bad habits or trends or like how men decide to deal with women moving forward, as if it was like. Institute like institutionalized like hoism, whereas like that's like yeah. a that really might be a thing. College is I terrible. Really think that might for be like, a thing. It for that kind of stuff, college is horrible because you really feel like you. <laughs> that's why Mono was so big on certain college campuses. Well, <laughs> that's a fact. I... Mono amongst other things. Yeah. I have to say, I don't. I don't think my dumb decisions have been relegated to just college <laughs> like and i actually like, oh, think but the frequency of how it happens at college or has the potential to happen yeah i have definitely did fast things post-college that like it like now that i'm an adult i'm like okay i didn't mind that i was fast you know because i understand why i was fast and i wanted to be fast in that situation uh but yeah, I, I, I don't, I guess everybody's different. I wasn't really that fast in college. You know, I was in relationships and mm -hmm. I was concentrated yeah. on my career, mm -hmm. you know, so I wasn't That's really the things around like that. To be doing. But yeah. in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I did dumb stuff in adulthood. You were adulthood, I was just jealous. Yeah. But I wasn't as dumb as I could be, I mean, I worked at an NBA team. I could have been one of these girl. <laughs> girl name. What's the girl name that's sleeping with all the people? Selena, somebody. I could have been that, yeah, but yeah. I had more respect for myself. Girl, you could have had, I don't know, whose baby. I don't want to put any names out there. I lied. <laughs> the guys all tried. Like, that's the thing. Is that like Well, that. do tell. Talk that talk, saying, yeah. like, you could get guys from every team trying, like, because I do feel like they're just men. And Name drop. Like they don't get told no, you know, from girls. So I, I was we talking about my friend now in the bubble. He was saying like any woman, he was like, she already get. He's like, it don't matter what she looks like, she get a plus ten because there's not that many women there. Well, the families are able to come now, but he was saying even busted girls. He's like, after a while, the guys kind of flirting with them. Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Standards dropped. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that many weeks. Uh oh, they gonna have bubble babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I said women are gonna be coming home to their husband like, how are you eight weeks pregnant? You've been going for twelve weeks, right? <laughs> and you've been in the bubble. What, what was going on down there? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this went kind of long. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, thank you guys for watching and listening. Subscribe on YouTube. Our YouTube numbers are struggle. Please help you know but uh please subscribe don't just watch it but hit that subscribe button and uh thank you for hanging out with us i mean to say what i'm shana b garnett briscoe aka sherlock homeboy dex the one dex the one two three episode 143 of the venus house podcast bye